creating your Facebook brand page. In this lesson you're going to learn how to create your Facebook brand page and the most important elements you need on it. Creating your Facebook brand page is a very simple process. Once you have the shell built you can add more and more features if you wish. However there are some basic elements you must have. We will be using this page throughout the product launch process you're going to be learning in a later module. Facebook page dimensions. You can go to Facebook forward slash pages sizes dimensions forward slash to see all the relevant dimensions of images and boxes. However, the ones we are interested in are the cover photo, which is 851 by 315, and the profile image or logo, which must be at least 180 by 180 pixels. In other words, it's a square. Now, to start creating our page, we need to go to facebook.com forward slash pages forward slash create forward slash. So let's go there right now. Okay, so here we are at facebook.com forward slash pages forward slash create forward slash. And all we need to do to set up our brand page is to click on brand or product, then choose category. And in the drop down, if you find something that's definitely your category, then choose it. Otherwise, you can just choose brand and then put your brand name in. So I've typed in Charter Kitchen and then I'm going to click on Get Started. And we've actually created our brand page. Now, obviously, we're going to be wanting to change some things and add some things, but essentially we've got our brand page. First thing we want to do is add a picture. I always put my logo in here. To do that, all you want to do is click on Add a Picture and then Upload Photo. Okay, so my logo is here. You can see LK Logo. Now, I just pulled this out of Google Images. I didn't have one created because obviously this isn't a real brand I'm creating, but I'm going to double click on it. Then it'll open a box for you to position your image. You can see here, this one's actually quite small. It's telling me that. But I'm going to click on Save because that's all you have to do. And if your image is too big, you can also crop it. You can pretty much do anything you want. And you've got a zoom here. But I think it fits okay inside the white box. So I'm just going to click on Save. And the page will refresh. And there you can see my logo is up there in the left-hand corner. Now to add a cover, you might have to play around with this. I've actually created an image that's the right size. You remember from the previous slide exactly what the sizes are. But I'm going to click on Add a Cover. And you want to choose Upload Photo unless you've already got some photos inside of Facebook. So I'm going to click on that. And the one I'm going to use is Kitchen Header Facebook Size. So I'm going to double click on it. And there you go. There's the image. Now obviously I've just grabbed an image from Google. And it's related to Kitchen. But obviously it's not a perfect image for my brand. And you can always get these images created. And I'm going to show you a really quick and easy way and cheap way to get these created if you want. But you can see here it's saying Drag to Reposition. So you can drag the picture around. But as you can see, mine is almost the perfect size. So there's not a lot of drag space, but I'll drag it across to the left. Once I've done that and I'm happy with it, I'm just going to click Save. And that's it. We've uploaded our cover picture and we've uploaded our logo. Now, the next thing I'm going to edit is the About page. You can see it here in the left sidebar where all the other links are. I'm just going to click on About. It's going to bring you to your About page. I'm just going to scroll down so you can see all the options. And the first thing we want to do is we want to create a username. So you just click on create page and username and then you just want to type your brand name in and you just type your brand name in with no spaces or anything and once it's typed in if it's available you'll get a green tick but I'm just going to click on create username and there you can see the username at Charter Kitchen has been created and you'll notice you've now got these two extra addresses too but once you finish click on OK and the main reason we do that if you look in the URL up at the top all the numbers have gone and we've got a nice clean URL can see facebook.com forward slash charter kitchen and that essentially will make it a lot easier for your customers to find your Facebook page. Okay so now we've got our specialty URL we're going to go back to our about page by clicking on the link in the left sidebar and we'll look at what else we can fill in. Start date you can actually put the date in when your company was formed if you wish. Now there's two options here there's a short description there's also a long description you can write both do make them different. I'm just going to do the long description. To add that, I'm just going to click on the link next to long description. You can see here, what's your page about? And you just want to put a description about your brand. Now, I've just put a very generic type description in here. You should spend more time on this. And remember, you can use this on your website and on other pages too. It's not just for your Facebook page. So spending the time to make a really good description is well worthwhile. Now, if you're not sure what to write, then go and look for other brands in your niche. So for instance, I might go and search Google for luxury kitchen accessories and find some other brands there and don't copy them, but you can use them for ideas 
And to give you a bit of inspiration, All I've put is Charter Kitchen is a small family-run business based in Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. We specialize in creating high-quality kitchen accessories using only non-toxic and environmentally friendly materials. Our specialty is creating cutting-edge tools that are perfect for everyday use. I'm going to click Save Changes. Now you can enter Founder Date. If you've got any awards, by all means add them. Obviously don't make them up. Products, you can actually click on that and enter your products when you've got some, but right now you're probably not gonna have. This is another good one to add, which is your website. Now I haven't actually created my website yet, but I'm gonna put it in here. It should allow me to do that. So I've done that, I'm just gonna click on Save Changes. And there you can see, Charter Kitchens. But that's all I'm gonna do for the About Me page. So I'm just gonna go back to our home page. Now the next thing we're gonna take a quick look at is Settings. It's almost at the top on the right hand side, you'll see it right here, click on Settings. And then you can work your way through these and figure out which ones you want to change. For the most part, you can leave them. But the first thing you want to do is visit a post. You want to click on edit and you want to check the box that says review posts by other people before they are published to the page. So that means you're allowing your customers to make their own posts or post their own videos or images or anything along those lines. But you will get to review them before you make them public. It's a better option than disabling because quite often you'll find your customers can give you really good content. A lot of the time they'll even write reviews and stuff like that. So you want to allow them, but at the same time, you do want to review them before they're made public because that will stop anyone spamming your page. Once you've checked the box, just click Save Changes. And you'll see here in Visitor Post, the bottom line is now Post Moderation is turned on. So you're moderating every post. Now there's lots of other options on here and most of them are actually up to you whether you want to change them but whatever you do just make sure you do edit the visitor posts now at any time if you want to edit your page you can do it from here from the settings tab you just click on edit page and you can see there are some options here now tabs we will be using later on when we start building our customer list but essentially the rest of the stuff you can leave alone for now now you can see you've got shortcuts here to share a photo or video advertise your business get messages create an event all different kinds of options but the most important thing you're going to need to start doing and you want to start doing this straight away is creating posts now you can manually do this by clicking in the box you see here that says write something and then typing out your post however to start with what we're actually looking to do is just post relevant content and preferably interesting content because what we're looking to do is start adding posts to our page so that it has content on it so that it just doesn't look like an empty page. Now the easiest way to do this to begin with is just to use other online content. The great thing about Facebook is virtually every content site online has a Facebook link and I'm gonna show you what I mean. So my brand is Lifestyle Kitchen and I'm going to be selling kitchen accessories. So I'm probably not gonna find a lot of great content about kitchen accessories. However, there's plenty of other topics related to a kitchen that I can use. I actually went and found this one to start with, and it's just a recipe, as simple as that. It's relevant to any of my potential customers. Since my site is all about kitchen utensils, then obviously, then a customer who's interested in my kitchen accessories will also be interested in recipes and other related content. But I just did a Google search for this, for recipes, and found this one. Now you do want to take more time about this and find good content you can see this one's only got three and a bit stars so it's not the greatest recipe but all you need to look for is the facebook icon and what we're going to do is we're going to take this content and put it straight on our facebook page with a couple of clicks so we click on the facebook icon and you can see here it's showing me the content the default's going to be share on your own timeline but we want to change that and we want to change it to share on a page you manage click on that and then you're going to click on the drop down and find the page. Now I've got literally 60 or 70 pages in this list, which obviously I don't want to share with you. So to avoid blurring all of them out, I'm going to click on this and select the page that we just created. And there you can see I've selected Charter Kitchen and you can add something to the post. Now you could put a bit thought, more thought into it and write a couple of sentences, but really all we need to do is share the content. But it's always best to put at least a, a short sentence or two in here. And once you've done that, you just click on post to Facebook. And if we go back to our page now and scroll down, you can see we've got some content. Now, this isn't particularly great content. As I said, you want to find good stuff because obviously it's just an image. To start building up the content on your Facebook page, it's fine to do that. So let's look at another example. So I actually did a search on Google for kitchen accessories and I managed to find an article that is about kitchen accessories. So that's obviously very good relevant content. 
and I'm going to click on the share button again, the Facebook share button. This one's slightly different. It's got share instead of just the Facebook icon. It's opening up the same page. You can see right now the default share in your own timeline. So I'm going to click on here and share on a page I manage. Then I'm going to click on the drop down and find chart to kitchen. Okay, so I found it and then I just click post to Facebook. If we go back to our Facebook page, click on posts, scroll down can see we've got another piece of content. Now I didn't add a comment to this. If you don't add a comment you can always come in and add a comment afterwards. You just click on the down arrow on the top right hand corner of the post, click edit post and then you can write something in. And I've just written great article about kitchen accessories and then click done editing. And I'm just going to quickly show you one more example. This time I've gone to YouTube and I've typed in healthy cooking. So I'm just going to select one. This one looks like fun and you can see here it's had 18 million views. So it must be a fairly good video, so I'm going to click on that. And then with YouTube, you want to click on the share underneath the video. It's going to give you all the options. Click on Facebook. And again, I'm just putting in five or six words, fun video about healthy cooking, but you can post longer content. But there's no need to go overboard. You don't need to write entire articles. The whole point here is we're using other people's content to build up our site. And again, I'm going to share on a page to manage. I'm going to find Chart Kitchen and click Post to Facebook. I'm going to close these now, we don't need them anymore. And if I go to posts, you'll see that we have a nice little video. So you just want to build up content. Now you don't need to go crazy. When you first start, you want to add one or two a day. And as you can see, it takes 10, 15 seconds to do it once you get used to doing it. Now that's pretty much all we're going to do for now for our Facebook page. As you can see, we're building it up and it will start to fill out and look like a proper Facebook page. But one last thing I want to quickly show you is how you can get these images created really cheaply. In other words, a cover photo. So I'm going to use our old favorite Fiverr. I've typed in Facebook cover image and you see all these designs. Now most of these designs are going to be $5 maximum. Remember, we can sort by average customer review and you can see the different types of Facebook covers that they've done before. You can click on them, open them up. But if you're not particularly good at doing this kind of thing, then just come to Fiverr and get it done. Basically, most of the jobs will ask you for information about your site. I would just say it's a kitchen accessories site. Give them an idea of what you want to see. Again, if you're not totally sure what it should look like, go search for some other Facebook pages in your niche to get ideas. But then just come to Fiverr and get them to create it for you. It's a pretty simple job for any graphic designer. So you'll normally find it is only $5, a maximum of 10 and they'll normally have it back to you within 24 hours. But as I say, if you're not particularly good with creating images or creating banners, that kind of thing, just come to Fiverr and get it done. But that's how simple it is to set up a Facebook brand page. And when you get onto our new product launch system that Mike will be teaching you, you'll see how important and how powerful your Facebook page will be. So what's next? Well, now you've learned how to create your Facebook brand page. In the next lesson, you will learn how to build a simple but effective website that does not require hosting. So action, go and build your Facebook brand page. Add the images, edit your about page, and don't forget to start adding content to the site. You don't have to write new content or original content. Just go out and use content you find online that is relevant to your brand. That's it for this lesson. Take care.